to my mind, we, a lot of us activists went out and educated people in the NDP. Yes. And they came around and they did what we asked them to. They amended the Provincial Human Rights Code. So that's why we became supportive of them, because they, they, they were the only people who actually responded to our pressures. Well, it's amazing what can get done by a few people. Could you uh, talk a little bit more about your uh, history with the bars? What was the first bar you worked with? Well, we were neighbors for a few weeks when I first came. But there was a lot going on at that time. And um, when you say we, who do you mean by we? Well, Bert Curry mm -hmm. and Gary Penny. There was just so much going on that I decided that's not wasn't for me. And then they opened Buddies, and we all went there. And how long did you work at Buddies? A couple of years, mm -hmm. two years, I think. Was there another bar you mentioned? Well, then Buddies closed, and then we opened up. Friends, which was right next to the um, where the girls were dancing uh, on Howe Street or the Quadra? No, no, where the um, it's a nightclub. Friends, it was called. The bar was called Friends. It was on mm -hmm. where the first steam bath in, Montre in Vancouver was. Oh, the Garden Baths. No, the first one in Vancouver. How far back is that? A long time ago. I have no idea. And uh, what's the last thing you've been involved in? Were you involved in any of the AIDS-related? Uh, well, I was a volunteer at a hospice mm -hmm. for AIDS at 333 Powell for five years. What was the name of that hospice? Well, it had a number of names, but it was May Guthridge Community Home, part of St. James. Okay. It was a really a fabulous place. I was... It was probably one of the most dramatic times in my life. It was run by a fabulous nurse. And little things that happened that were just great. You know, for instance, many times the patients couldn't keep the food down. Mm -hmm. And there was a little Japanese restaurant across the way. Mr. Aki, who's now on, the, on Alberni Street, I believe, he had a little place there. And he kept on saying, why are you buying all this miso soup? And I said, well, I told him. And so he said... You can have all this, the, the miso soup you want, and there's no charge. Oh, that's really nice of him. Yeah, it was very nice of him. And when you were in the bars, were you involved in fundraisers there? Well, yeah, we had fundraisers continuously, it seemed. Bill and I were um, part of the group that helped start the community center. And, yeah. And I want to make sure that that story gets told, too, because it was quite a, a battle at the beginning, because they're, they're, the bar owners and the Dogwood Monarchist Society and Search all, yes. all sort of were aiming at making it a, a men-only organization. And most of the other organizations were aiming at making it for both men and women. And there was a big battle on that. Yeah. And I want to tell that story someday, and I probably will soon. But I think it was a good idea that it would be for, for men and women. Yes. Well, we needed to build bridges between our communities because well, uh, of course. we didn't know it was going to happen, but... When the AIDS crisis came, women really were there for us. That's right. When there was no one else. That's right. And uh, I'm proud of them. I am too. Uh, getting back to your days in the Air Force, uh, were you uh, involved? Uh, Sexually active? Yes. Oh, believe me. I had a lover. Everything's done alphabetically in the Air Force. And uh, the guy next to me, his name was Stuart. And... Uh, he was my partner for, oh, almost four years, I guess. And then his plane blew up and he was, we were losing, at one time we were losing a pilot a day. The planes were so bad. I had some terrible postings like way up north in Resolute Bay and things like that. And being stuck up there with a bunch of guys, you know, was, uh, it was very difficult, very hard. Did you still manage to find a lover up there? Well, I brought them with me. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you can't find them locally, you bring them in with you. Yes. Well, I believe in Mae West. You know, when I'm not near the man I love, I love the man I'm near. <laughs> when you first got to Vancouver in 67, yeah, uh, were you aware of any gay organizations then? Well, I was aware slightly of Gate mm -hmm. and Rob Joyce. 
but there wasn't really that much. But there was so much going on, you know. By going on, you mean like well, there was the castle, which was very active, and there was the um, the shaggy horse, and uh, well, at that time it was probably called the August or something else. I think it was called something else. Yeah, uh, it the August became the shaggy horse, and that was. Uh, um, in the early 70s. It was the first bar I went to. I was actually looking for faces. Yes. And, but all I could find was an address. For... That must have been scary. Yeah. <laughs> no, actually, uh, it, it was, uh, I, I had read in the um, Georgia Strait uh, under the QQ column about two bars, both the, um, the August and uh, Faces, and I realized that Faces was a hippie bar, and I thought, well, that's my style, because I was a long-haired person at that time. But they only gave the address in an ad in the paper for the August, so I went to the August, and as soon as I went in and sat down right there on the bar was Go-Go Boys. So I, 20 or 30 minutes later, I finally got around to asking somebody where... You, you tricked to it, did you? Yes, I quite enjoyed the Go-Go Boys and the yeah. jock straps. But the castle was absolutely amazing, the number of people that went through there. What was the name of the manager there? Terry Wallace. Terry Wallace. He was such a nice guy. He later moved over to the Royal. Yeah. Yes. And um, there was another bar right behind the castle. You see, so you just cross over the... Yes. In the alley. Was that the ambassador? The ambassador. Yeah. That's exactly so it. A lot of people would go in and out. Oh, would go out the bars. back door and into the ambassador. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and that's, as a matter of fact, that's where I met my partner in the parking lot there. And um, were you inv ever involved in any of the other uh, cruising areas? No, but we did with the police liaison. We got a. They asked us if we would help them clean out. The, uh, what's the name of that? Lee's Trail? Lee's Trail. In Stanley Park, yeah. Yeah, it's Sandy Park. So we got some of the uh, gay um, leather guys, and uh, one of them was a minister. Did you, you know who I'm talking er about? Ernie Lacasse? Hmm? Ernie Lacasse? It could be. So anyway, we got, they put a policeman on horseback at either end of Lee's trail and we went in with rubber gloves. We put out, gave everybody rubber gloves and bags and we went through and, my God. Cleaned it up. And cleaned it up. All the garbage and crap. To it, yes. Mm -hmm. There was even a tree that had hundreds of condoms on them. Oh, you must have some fond memories. Oh, yes. I have more than fond memories. Mm -hmm. So you, you were telling me about uh, this uh, bar that you go to, uh, the Ivanhoe? The Ivanhoe, yeah. When we was when I was working as a volunteer at St. James Social Service, there was a man came in, a Greek man, Gus Leodakis, who was the manager of the Ivanhoe, and asked if we could help him with Christmas dinner. So for five years, we did Christmas dinner there. It was fabulous. Anyway, I still go there, and I like it. It's very down to earth. People, are, there's no pretense. You what you see is what you get, or what you. There's no pretense, there's, you know, nobody puts on anything, you know. And I go on the law of averages. The, um, there's a roughly 200 construction workers go in there every day, and I feel there's 10%, so that's 20 who would possibly be gay or, or be available. And um, I've had 35, so we're doing fairly well. Okay. And as a matter of fact, the day before yesterday, there was, we were, there was five of us uh, at a table, and then at one particular point, everybody d left except this guy and myself. He was a big guy, and my gaydar wasn't going off at all. So anyway, he stood up and he put his hands down on the table like that, and he said, would you like to exchange sperm with me? <laughs> <laughs> and I've never had anybody say that to me, ever in all my experiences. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you.